Well, maybe we haven't really seen the major effects of the micro-revolution yet. The people who predicted that it would sweep through offices like a plague have, to a large extent, been proved wrong. In most offices in Britain, we've been very slow to introduce automation. Or perhaps the technology is too expensive, or perhaps it's simply not good enough yet, not easy enough to use. Well, the pundits have always predicted that as mainframes, micros and telephone networks gradually interlinked, there would be an explosion of the new technology by those people who aren't skilled in the use of computers. Executives, managers, doctors, lawyers and so on. But one of the things that's holding this up is... Incompatibility. And we start our stroll down incompatibility lane right here in the home. Now, if you've got a home micro, you'll know that if you want to exchange software with a friend who's got a different machine, you can't. They're just incompatible. If you try to load this game, Elite, which is for the BBC, try to load that on the Commodore here. Well, the disc fits. That's a good start. Attempt to load it up. It's searching. Searching for Elite. No file not found error. Similarly, of course, the Beeb couldn't read a Commodore disc. Well, things are just as bad in the business world. The two standard operating systems, CPM and MS-DOS, are quite different. For a simple job like copying a file from one disk to another on this machine running under CPM, we type pip a colon file b colon. Whereas on this machine running under MS-DOS, we type copy a colon file b colon. Very confusing and quite unnecessary. And even where machines have the same operating system and claim to be similar, there can be problems. The IBM here and the Apricot over here, for example, use different sized disks. The keyboard layout is different. Those all important function keys for a start are on the other side. Most importantly, there's no guarantee that software written for, say, this machine would run on this one even if we could load it. But the situation is even more bizarre than that. Sometimes software won't run on different models from the same manufacturer. And you can't link programs together, not unless you're a software genius. For example, supposing I've been uh, using this popular word processor package, and I want to incorporate this graph from Lotus 123 into my letter, and that's not an unreasonable request. Well, no can do. It's simply incompatible. Communication between machines, except at the very simplest level, is still very difficult. The reason differences in what's supposed to be a standard for connection of modems. For example, this lead connects into this apricot OK, but it won't connect into this Macintosh. And even when you get the hardware to work, the software may prevent micros talking to each other or to mainframes. To communicate anything other than at a very simple level is really quite tricky. Electronic mail is very quick, very convenient, but the five major systems are all incompatible. If you're on one system, you can't send messages to somebody on another unless you use a telex. Just two weeks ago, the electronic mail service, One to One, who have 20% of the UK market, launched a charter for compatibility. But Telecom Gold, who captured 70% of the market, refused to commit themselves to it. Now, Telecom Gold is part of the international dialcom system. But we've taken this portable with its acoustic couplers to the USA, and there the things just don't work. Even if you do get the right modem, you can't access your mailbox back in Britain unless you make very expensive and special arrangements well in advance. Well, truly portable phones have appeared recently. This one actually has a data socket. Non-standard, of course. But this one here, that doesn't have one. Well, you can't use either of them outside Britain. Not yet, anyway. Standards haven't been agreed. And even within Europe, the BT predict that they aren't likely to be established until the early 90s. And so it goes on. It's a bit like a world where every car uses a different sort of petrol and even different controls. Now, there's little reason why most of these problems can't be resolved given some time. In some cases, the technology isn't good enough for a standard to be agreed. But in most, it's commercial competition or even simple muddle that's holding things up.